In C++, the default type of string is just a simple array of characters that can't be modified. There are a lot of good things about this, notably that they're immutable and incredibly fast, but sometimes you'll want to manipulate them. For these situations, you can just use the standard library string, which can be resized and manipulated and whatnot. Unfortunately, with all the powerful features of C++, the standard library string class is full of missed opportunities that would make them so much simpler and faster, at least in my opinion. But why should I just sit around complaining like everyone else when I can make my own string class? I decided to start from scratch and build what I think would be the perfect string, or at least the basis for something close. The most basic string class you can make would just store a null terminated list of characters along with its length, so that's what I started with. The null terminated C string is stored on the heap, and if you pass a string into the constructor, it will be copied to a new location on the heap, so it can be modified without any consequences. This is also the basis for how standard library strings work. Now it's time to add features, and I decided to start by making a way to convert string objects into regular C strings. If you want to do this with a standard library string, you have to call the C string method. This isn't really that big of a deal, but since C++ has operator overloading, we can make a class that can be automatically cast to a certain type. We could use an overloaded operator to automatically make the conversion from a string object to a regular C string, which would allow users to pass string objects to any function that takes a C string as an argument. There is only one reason I can think of for not overloading a C string conversion. It could conflict with an overloaded Boolean conversion. Boolean conversions are very useful for strings because they allow users to check if a string contains a truthy or falsy value. So instead of having to check if a string is empty the traditional way, you can just put a string object into an if statement and see if it's empty or not. This can become a problem if you also want to overload a C string conversion because in certain situations, the compiler won't be able to tell which type conversion you want. You can't pass a string object to C out if you overload both conversions because the compiler won't be able to tell if you want to print a boolean or a string, so it will just give you an error instead. Fortunately, there is a way to have the desired truthiness functionality without overloading a boolean conversion. Instead of creating a boolean type conversion, you can just use an explicit boolean operator and a not operator. These special operator overloads return a boolean value only in truthiness situations, and are never used to implicitly cast to an actual boolean type. I added both the C string conversion and truthiness operator overloads to my class and got some pretty good results. Because only the C string type conversion is overloaded, you can print a string object with C out or put S, but you can also check the truthiness of one of these string objects by simply putting one in an if statement. Another important feature with strings is comparison. I decided to make two equality operator overloads, one that takes a reference to another string object, and one that takes a regular C string. I'm not adding any more types of comparison, like an integer comparison for example, because this only causes problems. If you don't believe me, look no further than JavaScript, which needed a whole new equality operator for this very reason. So far, my string has some advantages over the standard library string, but I still need to add basic manipulation functions. Luckily, that isn't too difficult. I just made a few functions for inserting and removing parts of a string by resizing it accordingly. Since resizing might actually change where the string's data is located on the heap, the pointer that you get from a C string conversion isn't guaranteed to have a very long lifetime, especially if you're modifying the string a bunch. I decided to use the realloc function for resizing the heap allocations, which means the string data won't always be moved, but this is just for performance reasons and it's safer to assume a string's data will move each time you increase its length. The same is also true for standard library strings, so if you want to store the value of any string object as a C string, I suggest using the strcopy function to get a string with a much longer lifetime. There's still some missing functionality, however, and a lot of room for optimization. I started with the basic copy and move constructors, along with the destructor. 
The copy constructor creates a new string object by allocating a copy of the original string's data on the heap. The copy constructor is called when you assign the value of one string object to another. The move constructor has a similar functionality, but is only used when the original string is an R value, which means it's going to be deleted immediately. This is an important optimization because dynamic memory allocation and copying are very expensive, and when the original string object is just going to be deleted, we can transfer the ownership of the string data from the original string object to the new one, and set the old string object's data pointer to null. This is important because a string object's destructor will delete its data if the pointer isn't set to null. Besides Boolean conversions, the C++ standard library strings have a few more operator overloads. One of them is the array subscripting or array access operator, and it just returns a reference to the character of the specified index. That's pretty simple. C++ strings also have an overloaded addition operator, but it only works for other strings. A lot of popular languages allow you to concatenate different data types to strings, such as Java, and it's a lot simpler than doing it the traditional C++ way. Normally, you'd have to instantiate a special string stream object, and then use a bit shift operator to add different values to the string stream. The string stream can then eventually be converted into a regular string. Since C++ already uses operator overloading to concatenate strings, I thought I might as well improve upon it and allow concatenation of different types using just the plus operator. I started by making an addition operator overload that accepts two string objects and returns a new string object with both values added together. The string arguments are passed by reference to prevent unnecessary copying. I wanted users to be able to add different types to strings, so I gave my string class a constructor template that can convert most types to string objects using the standard library's toString function, and I made custom constructors for other types, such as booleans. Now data types such as integers and floats can be converted into my string objects, which can then be added together. Unfortunately, other data types aren't automatically converted to string objects when you use the addition operator, so I had to make more addition operator overloads that convert generic types into strings and then add them together. I made two generic addition overloads. One has a generic left argument and the other a generic right argument. This will make sure adding a string to an integer, for example, will create a new string with the integer value on the left side and vice versa. I made the generic operator overloads inline because they only return the result of a simple expression. I decided that I needed more optimization for string addition, so I made an extra set of operator overloads for R values, which are just temporary values. Normally, when you add two string objects, their contents are copied to make a larger string, but sometimes you have a string object that's going to be deleted immediately after the addition, so instead of copying it, we could just take its contents, use a special C function called realloc that tries to increase its length without moving it, and then we just let the old string object get deleted. This is a very important optimization, and the compiler will deal with it for the user so they won't have to know the difference between R values and L values. A nice benefit to my operator overloading is that you can add chains of different types of values, such as numbers and strings, or your own class type if you overload a C string conversion. I did some benchmarking and found that adding different values to my string objects was generally faster than doing the same thing with the standard library but my strings begin to slow down when you add too many string literals to them. To fix this, I had to make yet another set of addition operator overloads for C strings and their corresponding R value optimizations, but it paid off because it prevents redundant copying and allocation. I made a simple benchmark where multiple values were added to strings thousands of times, and concatenating with my strings proved to be almost twice as fast as the standard library. The speed advantage would likely change based on what you're concatenating, but in general, my strings are much faster in that regard. Now I have a string that's easier to manipulate, has advantages in efficiency, and is compatible with any function that takes a C string as an argument. As always, I will release the code for this video's project on GitHub, so feel free to use it for yourself. You can also try to improve upon it with more features and further optimization.
I have a few more videos planned that involve C++ templates, so please stay tuned.